managing natural resources in conflict-prone areas in Caraga Region, Philippines. Caraga Region is located in the northeastern part of Mindanao, the second largest island of the Philippines. Caraga Region, or Region 13, consists of five provinces and six cities. It has a land area of approximately 1.9 million hectares, 30% of which are open for private ownership and 70% are considered by law as public land. Caraga has a population of 2.3 million with a growth rate of 1.3% from 2000 to 2007. Caraga, rich in natural resources. Resource Forest Caraga is the former timber corridor of Mindanao. Large-scale logging business already began in the 1950s. Today, out of total area of 2 million hectares, approximately 1.2 million hectares are timber land. The Agusan River is the main means of transporting cut logs. Others are transported by land. Another major natural resource are the minerals. Since 2005, Caraga is developing into the mining capital of Asia. It has one of the biggest nickel deposits in the world. Additional significant chromites, gold, and iron resources. Also, significant deposits of coal are found in the region, as well as substantial amount of limestone. The mining and quarrying sector posted significant increase in terms of its contribution to regional GDP from 2010 to 2011. In 2011, it also posted the largest contribution compared to other subsectors such as agriculture and forestry, transportation, storage, and communications. In terms of export, by value, nickel ores contribute the largest share almost 99% of the total export of Caraga in 2011 record. While Caraga region is reaping from the benefit of its extractive industries, some adverse impacts were observed. One of which is its effect to the critical watershed, which is threatened by the wanton extraction activities in key watershed areas. The watercourses and headwaters are increasingly polluted due to logging and mining activities upstream. This results in the contamination and depletion of the available safe and potable water sources. This impacts greatly in the areas that depend on these threatened watersheds. In some parts of the Caraga, there is already a significant reduction in terms of volume and deterioration of water quality. Aggressive extractive methods such as open pit and flush mining and unabated extraction of forest resources significantly contributed to the siltation of major water bodies downstream and increased potential disaster risks such as landslides and flash floods, not to mention the adverse impacts to key biodiversity areas. Caraga has nine key biodiversity areas, some of which are of international importance. One of them is the Agusan Marsh, which was proclaimed a wildlife sanctuary by virtue of Presidential Proclamation No. 913, dated October 31, 1996, and covering an area of more than 19,000 hectares. The Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary was identified as one of the 10 priority sites for conservation in the Philippines. It was given the Ramsar Site Certification No. 1009, as a wetland of international importance on November 12, 1999, being the refuge and nesting area of migratory birds. Not only rich in natural resources, Caraga is also rich in culture and history. Some of the artifacts found in Caraga are the Balangay Boat and the Golden Tara of Agusan. The Balangay Boat, also known as the Butuan Boat, is evidence that in pre-colonial times, Caraga was already a center of maritime trade with contacts to other Asian societies. In the middle of the 16th century, first contact to Europeans were recorded. The infamous Golden Tara of Agusan is living proof of craftsmanship and metallurgy of early civilization in Caraga. It is a craft that could have been acquired from the early encounters with ancient societies of China, India, and Vietnam. 
It is also believed that the first Roman Catholic Mass was celebrated in Caraga. Caraga is also home to indigenous peoples, which comprise 20% of the total population. At the same time, the indigenous peoples are amongst the most marginalized groups. The main linguistic groups in Caraga are the Mamanwa, Higaunon, Manobo, and Banuwaon. In recognition of the rights to the IPs to ancestral domain, as enshrined in the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, or IPRA, 22 approved ancestral domain titles are covering approximately 17% of the total land area of Caraga. Several additional claims for recognition of ancestral domains are still being processed. Caraga is a paradox, rich in natural resources, but a lot of poor people. In 2012, the National Statistics Coordination Board survey revealed that the region's poverty incidence among families is 34.1%, one of the highest in the country. This means that almost half of the population cannot afford basic food and non-food requirements in a sustained manner. Compounding the gloomy poverty situation is the limited access to basic public services, particularly in rural areas. Existing health centers are often understaffed and inadequately equipped. Another aspect of poverty is the informal sector. The informal sector in Mindanao is the highest in the Philippines. The income, as well as the employment in the informal sector, is significantly above the average of the Philippines. The Philippines has a very progressive legal framework to promote and protect the rights of the indigenous people. The Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, Republic Act 8371, provides for the so-called four bundles of rights. The right to ancestral domain, the right to self-governance and empowerment, the right to social justice and human rights, the right to cultural identity. However, there are major challenges for indigenous peoples to exercise their inherent rights as enshrined in the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act. Several factors are challenging the full implementation of IPRA, such as fragmentation and conflicts within and amongst indigenous communities, lack of knowledge and appreciation on the rights and political structures of IPs amongst institutions and non-IPs, lack of sufficient financial and institutional capacities for the processes of ancestral domain titling, planning, and development, risk of misuses of the indigenous people's rights by certain groups and stakeholders for their own economic benefit, migration of settlers and migrants to areas which are part of the ancestral domain of the indigenous peoples. Indigenous communities are also affected by the armed conflict between government and non-state armed actors. Armed encounters often happen within ancestral domains of indigenous communities thus affecting those communities most. Claims and rights on land and natural resource uses often overlap. For instance, key biodiversity areas and protected areas are very often coinciding with ancestral domains. At the same time, these areas are often subject to mining tenements, which according to the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, would require free and prior informed consent of the affected indigenous communities. This complex and conflict-prone situation regarding land and resource use puts particular challenges on natural resource management in Caraga. This leads to regular attacks of armed non-state actors on mining and logging companies, establishment of various private armed groups, additional auxiliary and supplementary military forces, Hence, Caraga is a challenge for a peaceful and sustainable development. Since January 2011, the Conflict Sensitive Resource and Asset Management Program, or COSERAM, of the Philippine German Development Cooperation supports a multi sectoral approach of poverty reduction and peace building in Caraga. COSERAM aims to ensure that governance of natural resources is implemented in a peaceful and sustainable manner benefiting the community. Together with its partners, COSERAM addresses the five major peace-building needs for the Caraga region 
at local, regional, and national levels that includes the use of various methods to promote the nonviolent transformation of conflicts on natural resources and improvement of service delivery. In different areas of the region, we support development and implementation of various approaches. For example, initiatives that will achieve peaceful and sustainable protection and restoration of ecosystems through a harmonized development from upland ridge to lowland and coastal reef areas. Strengthening interlocal cooperation as sustainable and efficient way to foster more conflict sensitive use of natural resources in areas affected by armed conflicts. Enhancing capacities of local government units, DENR, and other partners for establishing inclusive systems of co management for natural resources use and economic development in conflict prone areas. Making the processes for recognition of ancestral domains and elaboration of development plans for ancestral domains more cultural and conflict sensitive. Providing capacity building and platforms for constructive dialogues on the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, Free and Prior Informed Consent, Mining Act and other relevant rights and regulations affecting the use of natural resources by marginalized groups. Supporting the documentation and recognition of indigenous knowledge and practices for the conservation of biodiversity. The developed and enhanced approaches and policies are being taken up for replication and upscaling by the national program partners. NEDA, DILG, DENR, NCIP, OPAP, Office of the Presidential Advisor of the Peace Process,